This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. $20 million, $19 million, $6 million. These are all awards recovered for clients of Phillips Law Firm. To win big, you have to fight big. And Phillips Law has been fighting the too-big-to-fail insurance industry for decades. Not every case will have a multi-million dollar outcome, but Phillips Law will fight just as hard to recover the outcome you deserve. If you or a loved one has been injured in a car accident or on the job, call or click today at 1-800-JUSTICE or visit justiceforyou.com. Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your home is going into foreclosure, and you feel like a financial wreck. You don't know where to turn for accurate information. I'm bankruptcy attorney Travis Gagné. Let's talk about some legal options. If we work quickly, we can propose a plan to save your home, modify the loan, or in many cases, even eliminate your second mortgage. The consultation is free. I've helped hundreds of people just like you make informed decisions about whether to save their home or exit it on a reasonable, organized timeline. The chapter you choose sets the tone for the next chapter of your life. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. If you go to the BJ Mix page of KISW.com, you're going to see this video of two dudes that just found out that their favorite server no longer works at Waffle House. These guys look so sad, man. <laughs> Watch this I video. don't blame them. They look so dejected. It's like, what the F? I don't blame them, dude. When, you, when you're going to a place and you have a regular place and you have somebody you really like there, it is a bummer when they're no longer there. Absolutely, yeah. dude. Like that just happened to us. You know, we have there's a certain Bigfoot job in Puyallup that we always go to. It's the one like right. It's right by like the McDonald's and all that kind of stuff. But that's like our go to. Like we like the other ones, but that one we like the most because of the the baristas there. And one of the baristas is one day like our favorite one, the one that Lulu would always bark at. Uh, she's just like, oh, today's my last day. I'm done. Oh, and no. both my wife and I looked and we're like. What? No. no. Where are you going? Because they're like, are you going somewhere else? We'll leave. We'll go to your other coffee place. <laughs> and she's like, no, no, no. I'm going to start doing like a nanny thing or something along those lines. I'm like, all right, well, we'll, we'll let you nanny our child. Like, we can't lose this person. Just keep making us coffee. We need your coffee. We need your coffee, damn it. <laughs> but it was such like a, you, you told us on the last day we weren't ready for this. Yeah. How dare you? I know, dude. I mean, it's like, yeah, breaking up. And I even it's looked like, at my wife. What? I'm like, if we didn't come here today, we would have never got to say goodbye to her. Like, let's yeah. do that. <laughs> See, I actually, when my last job as a waitress, when I was eight or about 20 years old, I told everyone a week in advance. And right. I remember, and I had, I was actually thinking about this yesterday because I found it. I had a whole family come in on my last day specifically to see me, and they gave me, the daughter made me a bracelet that I still have to this day. That's Aww. awesome. Like it was the sweetest thing. It is. It it is. Uh, it is definitely tough to lose somebody in a you know in, in that kind of relationship where you go and you get food or whatever and like, just like these two guys who at the Waffle House just crushed that uh, their favorite server no longer working there. She walked out. Is she here? No. She, she walked quit. out. I just walked in. And I said, "Is T Mac here?" She and he said, "Who?" Out, I said, "Tasha." She was like, "Nah, she quit tonight. She walked out. She didn't work here no more." And I was like, "Are you serious?" <laughs> He was like, yeah, shit, no more. I was like, oh, bro, okay. Bro. Yeah, there's nobody in there that we know. I walked in there. I looked around. I ain't seen nobody we knew. And I was like, all right. I'm done with this place. <laughs> Time to go. Time to go to Denny's. <laughs> wow, so did dude. she walk out and like, and it, I know, I'm worried about this employee. Like, did she quit? Like, did she leave in a blaze of glory? Yeah, that's a good question. Was it, you know, did, did she I netted the mood setter and just like, I quit this bitch? I quit this bitch. <laughs> yeah, or... Yeah, man. You know, it's it's tough because they don't make a lot of money and maybe they don't get a lot of good tips or maybe the managers are just not cool. It's too bad because some of these some of these servers really do a great job and get people to keep coming back, which is what you want. See, I'd like to think that somebody left her like a million dollar tip and then she just went off into the sunset. Something cool oh. like that, you know. That's All a right. nice little narrative that you've created. Yeah, I like to make up my own stories. I like it.
Jimmy oh, you Kane. and my wife, you and my wife would get along great. She has narrators like that all the time. Somebody's going to give me a lot of money and leave a house for me. No, a prince from a different country showed up and decided to wed her and took her back oh, to his country. Oh, that's what it was. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah, right. That's oh, what happened to my Bigfoot drama. Oh, nanny my ass. I thought it was a. I thought it was a Nigerian prince that it actually was. gave her a ton of money, and she just had to send a thousand dollars to get it. But also marry him. Oh, well, I mean, she's got to marry him to get that? Yeah, that's a small price. Wow, that prince has got a lot of, you know what, there's a lot of conditions on that. Well, the old prince is just handing out money over email. This prince is like, I got to get something out of it. Oh, I see. All right, so this is uh, not as as good of a prince, apparently. Do you remember a certain place? Like, uh, Is there a place that you're loyal to just because of the people that work there? Yeah. And 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 it's it's unfortunate because I mean some of the people are still there, but I mean one of the reasons I go to Zulu's Board Game Cafe because I used to go to a lot of different board game places, but it was the staff. The staff yep. is just fantastic. Uh, some of them we lost because of the pandemic, and so it's uh, that saddened me to know that like you know they just didn't they couldn't employ everybody like everybody couldn't employ everybody, uh, and they're starting to bring some people back again. But yeah, I, if there are some key people that if they you know if they weren't there, I don't know if I'd go there anymore. Yeah, I mean, I, I mentioned the Bigfoot Java for us. Like, there, I mean, that whole team. It, it's so funny. We go to other ones. Like, it's not like the team that we usually go to. Like, there's like several <laughs> of the people that work at that one. But then also the Hunter's Teriyaki, the lady that runs it. I just love that lady. She cracks me up every time I come in. She's super nice, and it's like I can't even imagine going to another teriyaki place because of her. And I mean, you know, I when I when I go to another place, but I take for granted that the local grocery store, like the Mercer Island QFC. There's some cool people that work there and they've been there a long time. And of course, you know, I've gotten to know them and it is, it's just so awesome to like, you know, to, to have these kind of relationships with folks rather than just you walk in, you buy your stuff and you leave. I mean, I mean, I, I, I mean, I got Jason, Victoria. Uh, there's just, you know, so Aww. many people, you know, Minka. I mean, there's Minka. a lot. Of, uh, oh, yeah. And, and, they, and they're like, I've known them for years where they like, they know our kids. And of course, Joey yeah. used to work there. So they always go, Hey, how's Joey doing? And, uh, man, it would be such a bummer. And if some of those folks weren't there anymore. And, but, but, you know, luckily a lot of them are still there. Someone said, I were, I've been at 13 Coins for 12 years at that restaurant. Got a new job at Waste Management, so I'm about to quit. And all my regulars that I've been serving for five to 10 years, not happy that I'm leaving. No. Oh, I wouldn't be. No, because 13 Coins is, is awesome, too. Damn, that would bum me out, too. Oh. All right. Yeah. I, I, all right. I want to, again, they all got a million dollars and rode off into the sunset. Exactly. With See? a Nigerian prince. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Why? No, I don't want that. Yeah, why, 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 why can't they go find their own prince with that money? <laughs> I mean, yeah, you could if you want to, but it's a little bit more difficult. Are you a matchmaker for this Nigerian prince? Are you yes, getting a cut if he I gets am. married? Oh, okay. <laughs> it's actually me that sends those emails out. Hi, everybody. Oh, oh, all right, wow. Here we go. DJ and Mix mornings on The Rock, 99.9 KISW. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. Ninety nine point nine K I S W the Rock of Seattle. Oh, I am loving that. Not only are people using the PA system to end their jobs, but that people are recording this. <laughs> yes. Oh man, I, I'm a trailblazer in this field. I used to use the PA system for a lot of fun stuff. <laughs> this is why. This is the few reasons why I like TikTok. It's encouraging this kind of crap. Yeah, there's a woman. Her name is Beth, and uh, like so many great people before her, she used the PA system to quit her job at a Walmart in Louisiana last week. And here she is explaining why. Attention Walmart shoppers and associates. My name is Beth from Electronics. I've been working at Walmart for almost five years and I can say that everyone here is overworked and underpaid. We're told that we're replaceable. This company treats their elderly associates like To Jared, our store manager, you're a pervert. Greta and Kathy, I hope you don't speak to your families the way you speak to us. Manage it and this job, I quit. Wow. Love, love Beth. I just, I like that she established who she was. It was great storytelling. She's like, I'm Beth. Yeah. I've been in the electronics department for the last five years. And now, not only does she understand that like, she's been around for a while, it's not a new employee that's just being, you know, weird or whatever. Like, she's been through it, man. Yeah, she's, she's been through it. it. Yeah. Well, do you Jared, think uh, that pervert. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah what are yeah, you doing? Yeah, really. I mean, it is. 
Oh, retail. <laughs> Do I remember it so well? And you know this has gone viral. Do you think, is Jared in a relationship? And if so, does the significant other find out about how he's a pervert? Oh, yeah. And, and what kind of conversation? So I saw this thing on TikTok, Jared, uh, a coworker of yours. Dude, Her this is... Beth, and she's been part of uh, the team for five years. Well, think about this. It is just like uh, Dazed and Confused, you know, because it, it, it places like Walmart where you get a lot of entry-level folks, college kids, maybe even some high school kids or folks that, you know, uh, they're younger. They keep coming in no matter how and, – and they leave, obviously, because they're going on to do other things besides Walmart eventually. So it's always young people coming in for that old perv manager. Uh, I've seen it so much in my career, and – you know, boy, I, I wish I could say that, Beth, it hasn't been going on that long, but it has. You know, pervy managers, you know, really just ogling the young new workers coming in. And let's not get started about Greta and Kathy. I mean, the way that they treat the Oh, well, there. Yeah, I mean. yeah, they're, you know, they're miserable, Greta and Kathy. <laughs> Yeah, you got that, you know, Steve, you got that uh, sort of trope, and that is uh, the older employee that just never left. Like, they didn't, they, they, made that, they made that retail job their life, and boy, oh boy, they, they can be ornery, some of those older employees. Oh, yeah. I wonder what happened that day that led to her saying, this is, did she go into work knowing she was doing this, or did it happen during, you know what I mean? Like, what, what's your mind like when, that, when this all goes down? I think she knew she was going to do it, because it kind of looked like she was reading off a page, like a script that she uh-huh. wrote. So oh, I did think she, she bring a script? Oh, yeah, nice. I could tell her eyes were kind of moving across. But she could have wrote that script that day. But, I mean, there was some premeditation. It wasn't just improv. Like, I'm doing this right now out of nowhere. Oh, I'm sure she's had conversations with coworkers about Greta, Kathy, and, and Jared. I mean, I think those <laughs> those three have probably been a topic of discussion amongst the coworkers for a bit. But I just wonder if, like, something was said to her, and she's like, today's the day. Screw yeah. it. Yeah. I'm uh, doing yeah. it today. There, I, don't, I don't know if you've – I mean, I think we've all had this. I hope we have, where you just have that, I don't need this job, I'm out. Uh, you know, and and it's such a such a euphoric feeling to know that I'm free, free of whatever you know the bonds that this lousy job had on me, and, and that you could just walk away from a real bad situation. I've had that, and it feels mm-hmm. like she had that moment too. Like I am free from this s. Now, do you continue? Did you finish your day, or do you like, do you leave at that very moment? I feel I, like when you, you when you drop an, point, yeah. when you drop an f bombs <laughs> over the pa, Steve. I feel like that's it. <laughs> You know, someone's got to, if you don't go, someone should escort you from the building. Great. Also, don't forget our deal, 20% off our 65-inch televisions, and uh, I'm still trying to get my commission. Yeah. I know you'd be that guy. What do you mean I got to go home? I'm going to finish out the day. I'm a good employee. You know, uh, even if even I've got to work with Greta, I'm going to still do it. I'm going to get it done. Make okay. them kick you out just to show, just more on that. Just be like, look, look, I still want to work right. here. I, I'm a good employee. Why are you trying to get rid of me? <laughs> I did try that. I remember when I went out there and had my meltdown at the radio station all those years ago. And I told the general manager when she brought me in her office, I go, look, I'm still willing to work out the two weeks. She's like, yeah, no. After, <laughs> no, you have to go. <laughs> so good. Someone just texted, I don't know, text line said, did you guys see what Tom Morello said about this? He posted the video on his Instagram. So I go to Tom Morello's Instagram. And he posted the video, like the person said, and he called it the resignation speech of the year. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I wonder if she's like a Rage Against the Machine or Audio Slave fan. That would be the best. Well, like, she had pink hair, I could tell. So definitely she's, you know what? She's, she's, I think she could be someone that could be digging, digging the cool stuff. I do love, I found her Facebook page. Uh, yeah. Her profile picture is just her with like a filter and it just says, just quit. <laughs> So she's just definitely she's broadcasting this. Making lemons out of was it? Yeah, lemonade out lemonade of lemonade lemons. lemons, whatever the saying is. Well, you and you, you out of chicken poop. You and Mitch know. today are really great with these sayings. Yeah, I, berries I, and nuts. You, know, and, you ought to put out a book. Yeah, there. Cherries nuts and butts, butts and yeah, chicken yeah, salad. <laughs> that's what it's all about. With poop and yeah. lemons. I think that's the saying, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, good for her. Back yeah. in electronics. Yeah, you know something, man. I feel I feel vindicated because I remember just how people were treated when I worked at the clothing store, and I thought you're never going to get anybody to do anything for you. You're not paying them anything. You got to be nice to them. You got to make it fun because they're not making anything. So to be abusive, as you know, which is the other side of it all, like the complete opposite. I mean, good for Beth. I mean, I think retail can be a beating. It really, really can be, and you got to be cool to retail employees if you, you know that you make because they have to put up with so much crap. All right, so what happens? You're Beth. You you do this right, and now now you're applying for new jobs. You got to get another job, and you're going oh, yeah. for an interview, and they're probably going to say, "Hey, what happened at your last job?" You know, sometimes they ask that question during the interview process, like, "Wait, what? Why did you decide to leave your last job?" It's going to show I quit Walmart. Yeah. 
in Colorado, I was Beth in electronics for five years. Yeah. Well, you have do simple you, you. Do you just, tell them what happened and do you share the video? <laughs> yeah, you just, oh, that is, you're right, Steve. That is tough. I mean, that video has gone viral. Luckily, she was wearing a mask. Yep. That's so a maybe different Beth she, in electronics from Colorado. Yeah. But she maybe, posted it on her personal Facebook it's a page. Different oh, Beth on my personal boy. Facebook. And oh, it's boy. <laughs> Apparently, though, she did post that. She said, thank you for everyone reaching out, asking for interviews. She's kind of weeding them out to see which ones are scams and which ones are real. But she's getting interview requests. See, Steve, you I'm and I surprised. are from a different time. You know what I mean? You and I are from a different time. If you or I did that and somebody learned about it, because you know, back when we were that young, we didn't have social networks to post stuff to. But if we did that, we'd want to hide that fact because nobody would want to hire us. But now people want to hire her because of this. It is such a different world. Oh, I mean, you saw that. App. I definitely want to bring her in to be like, I need to hear more about this story. And then it turns out the person's cool and you realize, like, yeah, you know, our workplace, we don't have people like, you know, what is it, Carla and Francine or whatever? Uh, Greta. Good old Greta, Greta and Kathy. My yeah, bad. We, and, and we don't have Greta. We don't have a Jared either. So we're not, like, that, that's not an issue. I would definitely want to talk to her. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, somebody that's got the guts to do something like that and also speak out a bit. You, Yeah, you know, people like at our job are like, hey, you could be a star. <laughs> you you know what? You're a straight shooter with management potential. That's what you are. Oh, so he says, I wouldn't hire her, though. Well, that's the thing. I mean, there, there are a lot of people that wouldn't. But I would say this. Um, you know, what she said and the reason she gave – I think are legitimate reasons. You know, if you've got a pervy manager and you've got other coworkers that are just miserable, I think that does contribute to somebody's, you know, uh, you know, somebody's wearing. I mean, you, you, we watch all those bar rescue shows and all those restaurant rescue shows, mm-hmm. and you see some of the people that work there that have horrible attitudes, but it's because of management. Like they're decent people, and a lot of them want to do better, but management's just so bad. And maybe because I'm that kind of guy and maybe I did scream the halls and thanks to Hair Club, he gave me a second chance because I was as bad as Beth, you know, screaming and yelling my head off because I just didn't like the management teams I was working with. So I don't know. I mean, uh, I think you give her a shot, Steve. Okay. Fine. You know what I mean? I mean, Beth, you know, you're hired. Yeah. I mean, for, you've got you get to listen, work in the electronics department here at the radio station. Oh, there you go. I was thinking you might hire her for Boober, you know, own company. I don't know if that's necessarily that I'm going to offer that invite. Oh, really? You don't think she's the quality? Of, you need well, the right kind of employee for Boober? Her issue is feeling that, like, okay, Jared's perverted. Hey, I have a job for you. It's the place is called Boober. Yeah. Don't worry. We're not perverted. It's just yeah. our name. Right? No, you guys, this That's is a professional kind of a, business. Well, I mean. Yeah, you know, I mean, th- th- you know going in as opposed to just somebody leering at you at a job that is, I mean, this is a whole, Steve, you're a professional right. company. We're, you're on, not, we're on the up and up. We're just yeah. providing lap dances to people that you give ride share rides to. You're very yeah, transparent so, about your pervertedness. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and there's going to be no Greta's or Kathy's. I mean, it's just, it's going to be Steve and Stevie. Yeah, no, nobody will curse you out. We promise no. you that. No, not at all. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. See, there you go. <laughs> Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. He's here right now and has agreed to answer more of your questions about bankruptcy. I owe a lot of back taxes. Can bankruptcy help me? Bankruptcy can discharge back taxes under certain circumstances. Some types of taxes are never dischargeable, like if you have taxes from an employee, if you ran a business and didn't pay employee taxes or sales taxes, those types of taxes cannot be discharged in bankruptcy. However, most people don't have those kind of taxes. Most people have just regular income taxes. If you owe income taxes and you filed your tax returns but just weren't able to pay the taxes, if the taxes are more than three years old and you filed the tax returns, those types of tax can be discharged in bankruptcy uh, in most circumstances, especially through a Chapter 13 case. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at choosetherightchapter.com. That's choosetherightchapter.com. Thanks for listening. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. $20 million, $19 million. 
$6 million. These are all awards recovered for clients of Phillips Law Firm. To win big, you have to fight big. And Phillips Law has been fighting the too-big-to-fail insurance industry for decades. Not every case will have a multi-million dollar outcome, but Phillips Law will fight just as hard to recover the outcome you deserve. If you or a loved one has been injured in a car accident or on the job, call or click today at 1-800-JUSTICE or visit justiceforyou.com. Realtors abide by a code of ethics. This is Article 9 in action. Beth, a first-time homebuyer, knew nothing about the home buying process, except that she wanted to buy a home. But her Realtor had the expertise to make sure Beth understood every document, even giving her copies to review with her lawyer so Beth could close on her first home with confidence. Complicated things explained in simple terms. The difference between an agent and a Realtor is real. Realtors are members of the National Association of Realtors. That's who we are.